All right, so now I'm going to talk about our new parameter tuning tool. So let me uh, start with some basics. So when it comes to parameters, parameters can have a big effect. I'll quantify this, this later, but, th but there's no denying that a good choice of parameter settings can significantly affect the runtime for your model. I browsed the Groby documentation and I found 57 Groby parameters that can affect performance on your model. Um, clearly 57 is too many to try by hand. You know, even if you just want to try a few, it's, it's typically not obvious which ones are going to be the best ones to try. And so what we've done is we've created a tool that basically allows you to explore different parameter settings for your model, try and find parameter settings that work well. And really what the tool is doing is it's capturing some, of, some rules of thumb that we've developed over time. Here are a few examples of rules of thumb that, uh, that are captured in the tool. So for an LP model, always try primal dual and barrier. Barrier is actually typically the fastest, but for any particular model solving from scratch, it's always possible that primal or dual is going to be faster. Uh, another simple rule of thumb, uh, if you're using simplex to solve your problem, well, don't bother trying any of the barrier parameters because they're not going to have any effect if you're not using barrier. Another rule, so if you discover after you've solved your problem that the majority of the runtime was consumed by pre-solve, well, why not try scaling back pre-solve? So why not try using the parameter that, uh, that, that tells the solver you spend less time in pre-solve? And similarly, if um, you find that on a particular model the mo you, you're having trouble finding a, a feasible solution at all, well, we have a set of heuristics that are designed to work extra hard at trying to find a feasible solution. Why not try one of those? So this is just a few examples of the sorts of rules of thumb that we've tried to capture in the tuning tool. Let me talk a bit about our goals in designing the tuning tool. So the first goal is we try to be smart when searching for a set of parameters. So as I mentioned, we have some rules of thumb. We try and capture these, and we try the parameters that we think are likely to, to help on a particular model. So there's some value in being smart about, their, about the search. There's also some value in being dumb about the search. So brute force really has its place when it comes to searching for parameter settings. There are definitely cases where a particular, for a particular model, the settings that help on that model are not the settings that we would have expected. So, you know, if you have a model, you're willing to let the tuning tool let run overnight, you might as well just explore a huge space. Just use brute force to do a lot of exploration. Another goal with the tuning tool is to try to find a small set of parameter changes. So what we found generally is that the number of parameters that are really beneficial for a particular model is generally pretty small. So typically, a handful of parameters are helpful. Um, at the same time, if you let the tuning tool just run forever, oftentimes it will return a set of you know, 10 parameter changes that produce the best possible result, the best achieved result. And more often than not, what we find is when it produces a set of 10 parameters, it's, it just got lucky. This was just luck. For whatever reason, these 10 parameters, when you combine them together, just happened to get produce the best runtime. So in general, given the choice between a large set of parameter changes and a small set, it's going to be better to choose a small set. It's more likely that that small set is going to be helpful if you then step away from this particular model you're tuning and look at uh, trying to apply these parameters to you know, future models, to related models that you're going to solve in, 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 in the future. Actually, one thing we try and avoid is, is to basically discard a set of uh, parameters that produces a good result. So rather than saying 10 is too many, we're not even going to show you this result, we actually present a list of uh, parameter sets that uh, produce good results for the model and let you choose. So uh, a related point is that when it comes to uh, parameter settings, what we're really looking for is parameters that really help as opposed to those that just got lucky. Um, and so we try to limit the impact of randomness on the results. So I'll talk about how we do that in a second. Um, and then finally, we've tried to choose reasonable default settings in the tuning tool. So you can just fire it off with no parameter changes at all. 
but we also provided a fair amount of user control. So if you want some control over the tuning process, that's available to you. All right, so how does the tuning tool work? So when it comes to invoking the tuning tool, there are two options. We have a command line tool. It's called GRB Tune. It's very easy to use. I'll give a demo in just a second. And then in all of our APIs, we have a function or a method that uh, allows you to tune on a, on a particular model. So in the object-oriented interfaces, it's just, uh, if you have a model object M, it's just M.tune. So when you invoke the tuning tool, the, the, the tool has two phases. There's a, there's a baseline run phase and there's a search phase. In the baseline run phase, you're just doing one run on the model with no changes in the parameters, just to get a sense of, first off, what the time is without changing anything, which gives you a time to beat. And the second purpose of this baseline run is to gather some statistics about where time is being spent when solving this model, which we can then, which we then use to uh, influence the, the parameters we try, try in the search phase. So once we've done the baseline run, then we start the search. In the search, we just try lots of different parameter settings, keep track of the best one that's found. Uh, we have a default time limit for the search phase, but you can actually adjust the amount of time spent in searching using the tune time limit parameter. So I'm actually now going to give a demo of the tuning tool. So this is actually, this is on my, uh, my Windows machine. This is, this is the SigWin window. And I'm just going to invoke GRB Tune. I'm going to set a time limit, time limit of, uh, I don't know, thousands, 100 seconds, and then misc07.mps. So I'm going to invoke the tuning tool on model misc07. What you can see is the first thing, first thing it does is the baseline run. So it's just getting a sense of uh, how long that model takes to solve. You can see the runtime for the baseline one was 3.45 seconds. And now we're headed off into the search. We're exploring different parameter settings. Um, in this, in, in uh, run number three, we, we tried cut passes equals three. Run number four, we tried symmetry equals two. Um, at this point, we have reduced the runtime from the baseline of 3.45 seconds. Runtime is now at 2.62 seconds. And then actually we just found a, a parameter setting that uh, produces a runtime of 1.54 seconds. Um, and so this will just continue. I'll actually talk about the output you're seeing here in, in more detail now. I just want to give you a, a sense of how, it, how it's invoked and what it looks like when it runs. All right, so um, the first thing, as I mentioned, the first thing that happens in the tuning tool is a baseline run. And for MIP, we actually do two baseline runs by default. The difference between the two baseline runs is that we use different random number seeds. Um, the intent of doing these two baseline runs is to reduce the impact of randomness. The, the, the logic here is that if, there's a, if there happens to be a set of parameters that gets really, really lucky for this model, it's just less likely that that set of parameters is going to get luck, lucky twice, that it's going to get lucky for both random number seeds. So there's actually a parameter tune trials that allows you to adjust the number of baseline runs you do. So two is an, it's an arbitrary choice. Basically, the, the number you need really depends on how sensitive your model is to uh, small perturbations, for example, changing the random number seed. And actually, another thing I wanted to point out about the baseline run is the baseline run, uh, if, you, if, you, if you set parameters on your model, the baseline run and actually all the subsequent search runs will include those parameter settings in the set of parameters that are considered. And so, for example, if you know that you want to solve the model to a 1% MIP optimality gap instead of the default gap, you can just set the, the MIP gap parameter to 1% and that 1% value will be used for the baseline run and for all subsequent search runs. All right, so once the once the baseline run is done, the next step is the search. Uh, so what I've shown here is a, a single uh, parameter set for model MISC07. This, this was just it's an excerpt from the larger run. This is a uh, parameter set number nine. So in this case, it's trying uh, setting the heuristics parameter to zero and the MIP focus parameter to one. 
and you see it does two runs here for the two random number seeds. Uh, the two runs produce run times of 1.12 and 0 0.97 seconds. And the next line shows that the base run time for this model, MISCO 7, on this machine was 2.31 seconds. And the best run time found so far, which is this, which is this run right here, is 1.04 seconds. So it's found a set of parameters that improved the, the performance by more than a factor two. And then it shows the total elapsed tuning time and the remaining tuning time. It does this for each set of parameters that it tries. So once the search is done, then the, the tool presents final results. Now, so here are final results for an LP model, model PDS100. So the final results show the baseline runtime, which for this model was around 42 seconds. And then it shows runtimes for a selection of parameter sets that were explored in the search process. So for this model, the first set that is displayed is uh, has a runtime of 30.3 seconds. Change the method parameter, the pre-passes parameter, and the pre-solved parameter. The second result that's displayed had a runtime of 30.36 seconds. Change the method parameter and the pre-passes parameter. Um, and finally, the third set of parameters displayed had a runtime of 30.89 seconds, and it just changed the method parameter. So given that the base runtime was 42 seconds, and these are all around you know, somewhere between 30 and 31 seconds, it seems pretty clear that method equals 1 is the important parameter setting here. Method, one, method equals 1 is selects dual simplex. So when it comes to the results that we display, so we display a set. And in fact, this set represents the, the efficient frontier. And when you consider the trade-off between the number of parameters that are changed and the runtimes that are achieved. So, for example, if your best runtime achieved changed three parameters, we will, of course, display that result. And we will also display the best runtime achieved by changing two or fewer parameters, the best runtime achieved by changing one or fewer parameters. This allows you to explore the trade-off between the number of parameters changed and the runtimes you get. So if you want more results from the tuning, you, we have a parameter tune results, which allows you to add more results to the set. So for example, if you set tune results to 10, we'll actually present the, the results for 10 different set of parameter settings. We'll always include the efficient frontier, and then we'll add in more results to, to round out the, the number of results to the desired value. And then when GRB tune is done, it actually writes the best parameter choices out to files and the associated Groby log files for those uh, choices out to files as well. So uh, here are final results for model MISCO 7, it's actually a MIP model, sorry. Uh, baseline runtime 2.42 seconds, a parameter set that, re that produced a runtime of 0 0.98 seconds, one that produced a runtime of 1.06 sec seconds, and one that produced a runtime of 1.70 seconds. Um, and these sets have changed three, two, and one parameters respectively. So this is the efficient frontier of the, of the results that were found in this model. And at, at the bottom you see we wrote the parameters to parameter files tune1.prm through tune3.prm. And we wrote the Groby log files corresponding to these parameter choices to tune1.log through tune3.log. So at this point you may be wondering what tuning criteria are available in the tuning tool. So, so far we've only looked at tuning to minimize runtime. Um, we can actually also uh, tune to minimize the optimality gap for a MIP model. Um, and in order to select this, you don't actually have to do anything. This is all automatic. If you set a time limit for your solve, if the baseline run is able to solve the model within that time limit, solve it to optimality within that time limit, then we just automatically assume that your goal is to minimize the runtime for that model. If the baseline run is unable to solve the problem to optimality within the time limit, then we assume the goal is to minimize the optimality gap. And if in the course of exploring different parameter sets, we find a set of parameters that can solve the model within the time limit, then we just switch to trying to minimize runtime. Another point I want to make here so far, I've just talked about tuning a single model. Uh, the tuning tool can actually be used to tune over a set of models. 
So for example, GRB tune, you give it a list of MPS files or LP files or what have you. Um, and the tool will try to minimize the runtime over the full set, so the total runtime over the full set of models or list. Or again, if these models don't solve the optim if any of these models don't solve the optimality, we will try to minimize the mean gap over the full set of models. So let me talk about uh, the performance results you might get from parameter tuning. And this was just a simple test just to get a sense of how much impact um, a good choice of parameters can have. So what we did was we took a set of 423 MIP models from our internal test set. We basically took all of the models from our test set that took between 1 and 10 seconds to solve the optimality. And then for each one we allowed the tuning tool for, to run for 500 seconds and then we compared the runtime for the best uh, result found by the tuning tool against the runtime for default settings. And what, what we found was that on average, the mean improvement for, on, in runtime from using the best settings was a factor of almost three, a factor of 2.99. And these are fairly easy models. We chose models that solve in between one and 10 seconds just because we wanted to run a lot of models. We wanted to test across a broad set of problems. I mean, generally what we expect is that you'll typically use the tuning tool for harder models, and you'll typically let it run for you know, a lot longer than 500 seconds. Um, but, I mean, really the, the key point here is that a good choice of parameters can actually have a pretty significant impact on the runtime for a model. So actually that concludes the web seminar. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always send us email to info at groby.com. And if you want to try what you've seen here, you can, just, you can go to our website um, and download a free trial. The free trial is the full product, with the only difference being that we limit the size of the problem that you can solve.